This video provides a basic description of the multiple steps necessary for welding a cross-country pipeline. Shortly after the right-of-way is prepared, the individual pipe joints are placed in position along the trench. This is known as stringing. The construction of a pipeline can be considered a traveling assembly line. Each task is performed as consistently as possible at each weld joint as the line progresses across the country. As the line is assembled and welded, the pipe is supported by the side boom tractors. After welding, the pipe must be supported above the ground to allow access to the bottom of the pipe. This is typically done using cribbing, which is usually made up of timbers stacked beneath the pipe. It is important to keep the pipe in as straight a line as possible so each support must be adjusted. Preheating of the pipe is done by various means. In this case, a multi-head oxy-fuel torch is used. Induction and resistance heating blankets can also be used. Preheating removes moisture and also slows the cooling rate of the welded product to allow hydrogen diffusion and thus reduce the possibility of cracking due to hydrogen trapped in and near the weld. The next pipe to be installed in the line is lifted by the side boom tractor. Notice the cribbing timbers located on the front of the tractor. The pipe is lifted and prepared to be placed in position to weld. The pipe is now positioned close to the leading end of the line. The internal clamp is pulled forward from its location at the previous joint. Once the internal clamp is nearly in position, the bottom of the pipe is preheated again to ensure that all of the moisture is removed. The internal clamp is positioned exactly as needed to locate within the end of the running line. The next pipe joint is then moved into position over the end of the internal clamp. The long tube attached to the end of the internal clamp reaches completely to the other end of the new pipe being installed. This allows the crew to open and close the internal clamp and also make small changes to its position. The next joint is roughly located by the crew. Once in position, hand signals are used by the crew to adjust the pipe. With a little assistance from the crew, the pipe joint is held in position and then secured with the internal clamp. The root pass welders now instruct the side boom operator in order to adjust the root opening gap. Very small adjustments are made now. The welder on the near side is placing a gapping gauge into the root opening. Once he is satisfied with the opening, he holds his gauge in position while the welder on the opposite side directs the boom operator. The STT welding process is being used for the root pass on this pipeline. It is a gas shielded process and therefore requires an enclosure to provide an environment where the shielding gas will not be blown away. This enclosure is supported from above by a crane on the rig. The enclosure is often referred to as the shack. The rig is equipped with a generator for electrical power and holds gas bottles and an air compressor for the internal clamp. The shack has the welding equipment mounted inside such as the welding power source and wire feeder along with the necessary tools like grinders. The shack is designed to fit over the pipe. The shack is lowered over the pipe. The shack rests on the top of the pipe but is designed so that the sides rest on the ground, thus giving a stable platform for welding inside. There are doors mounted to the ends to close around the bottom side of the pipe to seal off the external wind and elements. The welders enter the shack, one on each side of the pipe, and prepare to weld. The root pass is performed by hand using the semi-automatic STT welding process. The weld is established at the top of the pipe and the water proceeds downward around the weld joint. The welders will make as few stops and starts as possible during the weld, so they adjust their position multiple times during the weld.
As the water gets nearer the bottom of the pipe, he must reposition himself for better access to the joint. The root pass is finished in the overhead position and visually inspected. Once the root pass is complete, the string is prepared to move forward. Each rig in the string performs a specific weld pass on the pipe. The shack on the first rig is equipped to perform the root pass as we just saw. The following shacks are equipped to perform the fill and cap passes using the Buggo Piper Plus pipe welding systems. For this pipeline, the fill and cap passes are being made using the gas shielded flux cord process. The Piper Plus travels upon a stainless steel ring that is wrapped around the pipe and latched into place. The ring is placed a specific distance from the weld joint, usually approximately 10 inches from the weld center. The water at the left of the scene can be seen mounting the ring to the pipe. This ring will stay in this location throughout the welding process. Each shack is moved and located over the weld joint for each subsequent pass. Once all of the passes are complete, the ring rail is removed from the pipe and carried from the back of the string to the front, where it is installed as soon as the root pass is complete. Here we see the ring rails in place on the pipe as the tractor moves the shack forward. The welders provide direction to the tractor operator via hand signals for proper positioning of the shack over the weld. The shack is lowered onto the pipe, the doors onto the pipe are closed, the floor decking is dropped into place and the welders enter to begin the next weld. With the ring rail already in position, it is a very quick process for the welders to mount their welding tractors to the rail. The latch holding the support wheels in place is closed to locate the tractor on the rail. It is then manually rotated around the rail to the position where the welder will start the weld. The welder picks up the operation pendant and makes minor adjustments to the position of the torch using the steering knob. Once satisfied with the location of the wire with respect to the joint, he initiates the welding process by pressing the start button. The system goes through a preset startup sequence and begins to weld. All motion and welding parameters are preset for the given pass. Since each shack welds only one pass, the welder is very familiar with what he expects to see in the weld joint. He can make minor adjustments to the welding parameters during welding, but in general his primary task is steering the system. The flux cord welding process is a high deposition process that is applied in the vertical up progression. In order for there not to be issues with both welders attempting to weld in the same location at the top or bottom of the pipe, different starting locations are employed. One welder will begin at the very bottom of the pipe, 6 o'clock, and begin to weld upward toward the top of the pipe, 12 o'clock. The second welder begins at the side of the pipe, 3 o'clock, and welds to the top, 12 o'clock. Since there is less distance to be traveled, this welder will finish first. Once he reaches the top, he disengages the clutch on the tractor and moves to the bottom of the pipe. He grinds out the weld start he created along with the weld crater from his weld. He then grinds the start of the other welder's weld, positions his tractor at the bottom, allowing some amount of overlap of the welds, and begins welding uphill to the middle of the pipe, 3 o'clock. The welder on the opposite side continues to weld and completes his weld at the top of the pipe. Providing a consistent ground for the welding circuit on a pipeline can be a challenge. The typical ground clamp that is placed on the edge of the plate or bolted to the weld fixture is not practical on a pipeline with no edges available to the welding shack. Further, it is critical that the coating applied to the outside of the pipe not be damaged. Any cuts or scrapes on the surface could cause corrosion on the surface of the pipe which is not acceptable. In order to provide this welding ground, 
a system of grounding pins or plates on lever arms is used. One pin or plate is positioned in the weld joint itself as the weld is performed on the opposite side of the pipe. As this weld is completed, this ground pin or plate is lifted and the one on the opposite side is lowered into the weld joint. In this manner, if an arc strike would occur as the ground is placed and lifted, the arc strike is welded out as the process passes over the former location of the ground. This entire grounding assembly is attached to the inside roof of the shack by a pair of chains. As the shack is lifted off of the pipe, the ground assembly is removed. After the shack has been moved and is lowered onto the pipe, the ground assembly locates itself on top of the pipe ready for quick adjustment by the welders. Another pipe joint is already in position as the pipeline extends across the field with welds made using the Buggo Piper Plus system.